But what if I decreased the intensity so much that there wasn't a whole wave of light going through there, there were only single photons? Then how could they interfere with each other because there's only one in the device at any one time? So would we still see an interference pattern? That is what we're going to find out. I'm plotting a graph of the number of photons counted as a function of position across the detector. If you have a look after one second, the distribution seems random. There doesn't seem to be any pattern in the arrangement of those photons as they hit the detector. So maybe it's true. A single photon can't interfere with itself because it's just a localized point. It has to go through one slit or the other. But just to be sure, let's add up the results over a period of time and see if any pattern emerges. Look at that. You can clearly see the same interference pattern that we got when we were sending tons of photons through, but we're getting it out of single photons. We're counting up individual photons. And that pattern is emerging as we aggregate the results over time. But how could this be happening? How could a single photon pass through both slits? Well, if we try to interpret these results in terms of the objects we experience every day, they don't make any sense. A, a photon is something different to a macroscopic object. It's not a wave and it's not a particle, it's a quantum mechanical object. And sometimes it seems like it has properties of a wave and sometimes it seems like it has properties of a particle, but ultimately it is something totally different to anything we've experienced before. And that's what makes this seem so counterintuitive. So what is light, wave or particle? The true answer, I think, is neither. Though if you want, you could call it a wavicle. But if we look at the two-slit experiment as a process over a period of time, with time being formed photon by photon within the reference frame of the experiment, it can make sense. Light waves will come in contact with the plate with the two slits collapsing into new photons with a position in space and time. The light waves that do not come in contact with the plate will go through both slits. The waves will then form constructive and destructive interference over a period of time and an interference pattern will build up on the screen photon by photon. This interference pattern will continue as time unfolds photon by photon within the isolated reference frame of the experiment. Just as in Newtonian physics only when an external force comes in contact with the light does the interference pattern collapse. When an observer tries to see which slit the photon went through by turning on an electronic detector forming a new photon-electron coupling, the interference pattern collapses. This is because the photon-electron coupling represents a new moment in time, the moment of now, within the reference frame of the experiment. If the observer turns off the electronic detector, the interference pattern will reform over a period of time photon by photon. In this theory we have a universal interactive process. The same interference pattern can be seen when sunlight breaks through clouds forming rays of sunlight. We always have a probabilistic uncertain future coming into existence with the exchange of photon energy. The wave particle duality of light and matter in the form of electrons is forming a blank canvas that we, as atoms, can interact with, forming a future relative to our actions.